go the direction. All right. Um, have Coulomb's law in mind as we start magnetostatics. Okay. Um, so far, we have been studying electrostatics. That is the electric field due to various charges. So we look at point charge, line charge, sheet charge, volume charge, et cetera, et cetera. Now, a current flowing through a conductor produce a magnetic field. Now, consider Boyd Savat law as the magnetic magnetic field version of Coulomb's law. So consider a conductor carrying a current, such as illustrated in this figure. <clears throat> now, we want to find what is the magnetic field at some point P. By the way, magnetic field intensity vector is H. So we want to find the magnetic field at some point P due to this current. So what we are going to do first is consider a small length, a differential length of your conductor. And we are going to denote that DL, right? So, the differential current due to this differential length is I dl. So I is flowing through the conductor, differential length, differential current, I dl. The direction vector R from your differential current length to the point where you want to find H or DH, DH being the magnetic field intensity vector due to the differential length or the differential current idea. So the point is at this time, R from the differential current element. Now, this angle 
theater is the anger between your differential current element and your differential length here, or your reference here. So this is your angle theta. Now, we said that what's that sovereign law is the magnetostatic version of your Coulomb's law. So what it states, the Boyd Savat law states that the, the magnetic field intensity vector dh produced at a point p due to a differential current element idl is proportional to the product of the current I and the differential length L, DL, the sign of the angle between the element and the line joining P to the element and inversely proportional to the square of the distance R between point P and the element. So what, what that means in terms of a formula, in mathematically, is directly dh, directly proportional to i, dl, and sine theta, and inversely proportional to r square. To get rid of the proportionality, we have a constant of proportionality, k, so we write this equation, dh equal dk over i dl sine theta over r square. i r k, the constant of proportionality in SI units is one upon four pi. So dh equal i dl sine theta upon four pi r squared. Does that equation look familiar to you? Yeah, with all the epsilon. Without the epsilon, it would be what? It would look like what? Coulombs. So that Coulomb's law without the, without the epsilon, with the epsilon and you know the sine theta. Right. So, in other words, we're supposed to breeze through the magnetostatics because it follows strictly a line along the line of the electrostatics. Okay. Now, let us make some assumptions. All right. Let us express this equation then <laughs> in vector form. So DL is the magnitude of vector length DL. AR is a unit vector from the differential element, current element to point P. So DL DL cross AR AR is the unit vector in the, in the direction of R. So what's cross product? 
first product is DL AR Science Theater. Agree with that? Well, and I have to ask if you agree with that because that are the that are the standard definition for grass product. The magnitude of DL and the magnitude of AR sign theater. Now for AR equal one, it amounts to DL sign theater. So let's write this equation now in vector form. DH equal IDL cross AR over four pi R square. Whereas we know AR unit vector in R is the vector over the modulus of the vector. Hence we have in vector form void savart law for the magnetic field intensity equal ideal cos r over four pi r squared. You see, you see what we do is we replace the AR by R upon the modulus of R. So this become R cube and this become vector R. So this is Boyd Savart law for magnetic field intensity. Now, this is the magnetic field due to a differential element. So for the entire conductor, you have to integrate along the length of the conductor. Hence, to obtain the total magnetic field, H, takes the integral form h integral along the com the entire line ideal cross ar which is this one this All right So, we are, if you notice this is a closed integral, meaning non-current will flow if the circuit is not closed, right? So, Here you have it. The closed integral is required to ensure that all the, the current elements are considered. This is because current can flow only in the closed part provided by the closed circuit. 
if the current element is considered at point one, and P is at point two, as shown, the magnetic, the differential magnetic field at point two, right, is I1, current, I1, BL1, cross AR12. That is the unit vector from the current element to P, or to point two over four pi R12 square. Note the unit, current, um, Ma magnetic field intensity is amps per meter. For this equation, we have I1 current to DL1 at point one, DL1 differential vector length at point one, AR1 unit vector in the direction from element at point one to point two. So unit vector is R one two, or vector R one two over R one two. So, the magnetic field at point two is given by this. Now we remember, remember, we looked at what we call the integral form of electric field and the differential form of electric field. You must recall that. Similarly here, this form is called the integral form of boyd savrat law. We will look at the differential form later. Questions so far? So is, 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 is the term magnetic field and magnetic field intensity, are they the same thing? Yes. Yes. Um. Yes. Okay. Any other question? All right. So, I think what we did last week was very helpful. So let me give you something that we are going to Okay. Oh, shit, this is not going to work.
Just one second. For me. So, see how you would approach this song, you know. Ready? Ready? Ready to write? I'm going to read something. Perfect. An infinite, an infinitely long, straight filament, filamentary current I along the Z axis. All right, all right, take your time. Let's say we don't know shorthand. Ever hear about shorthand? Come on, but we don't have skills, so. Hmm? Yeah. You know how the skill is, the skill is, the skill is done with, you know what it looks like? Yeah, man, the skill is done with. You can, can, can repeat from the start and top. An infinitely long, straight, yeah. filamentary current I <laughs> along the Z axis. In cylindrical coordinate, A point in the Z equals zero plane. Is selected. Determine It's not gonna work because I would have to give you a sketch. All right, let's try it anyway. They determine the electric field. at a distant R. 
from a differential current element, I dl. Dr. Finish? Yeah. When I read what I'm going to tell me what I have is correct. Well, not again. Read what I'm an, an infinitely long filament lie along the z-axis in a in cylindrical coordinate. A point in the z equals zero plane is selected. Determine the electric field at a distance r from a differential current element ideal. Right. Sir, mm -hmm. you can draw up on this something else. And drop now. Oh, yeah, I don't know. You say, look above. You say, number, with the eight there, number eight equation, just move your cursor up. Move your cursor up. Yes, right there, sir. Move the mm -hmm. cursor up. I say, draw that. Oh, that's all? Yes, it's a draw, draw to the right. Yeah. So, my gun come on, sir. Yeah. Sure, man, then. Oh, yeah. look, on, sir, man. Why can you tell me this long time, brother? It was just as easy. Oh, well, yeah, sir, man. Then we're not in a business, I know, man. So, so, so erase that because that. All right, now. See this now. Draw. So, so I'm going to try to draw a straight line. So now. That's not a straight line. But... We, get, we get a picture. So we get a picture. All right. So this is a straight line. So this is your differential. This is your, this is your Z, eh? So, we want the, whole night tonight, may I practice this one, brother? Next week, I'm gonna come with bad man, this one. <laughs> All right, sir. Yeah? All right, cool. So this now, because I have to put in some arrow thing now. So this, this now, this would be the, the what? The Z equals zero plane, right? Yes, that is the point where they choose. They select it. No, no. No. Don't ask so now. Mother Road. We are gonna have that so we have a point here, right? Oh, okay. This is where we want to find H. I'm excited. See you. See you feel that I go around so. Sir, what are you find? What are you find, sir? Eh? So what are you find the part of minutes up? Okay. So? All right.
We're back on track. Yeah. We're back on track now? Yes, yes. All right, now. So, <laughs> what you say the arrow that is going around represent? All right. So this now, so this now is your current flowing like this, right? Right. See a differential current element here, ideal. Okay, okay. All right. So you see, see the, the vector R from ideal to the point where you want to find this, right? So, all right. Consider your, consider this now. sit on top of your desk right all right so you are gonna make a, a circle on on a page right so this would be coming out of the page you see direction you with me your Z, your Z yeah, yeah. would be coming out of the, the book, right? Mm -hmm. And it would be on the book, right? So you, 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 um, you, your, your circle would be in the X, Y plane, right? Or in the row, row, cylindri cylindrical coordinate would be the, what, the, 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 the R, what we were using, row R, R. So this R5. would be, yeah, so this would be R and this would be five going around, right? Mm -hmm. You see me? So H, I am, I, I am magnetic field um, vector. So, which makes sense because, all uh, right, the current flowing and it producing magnetic field so you will be you would have circles a magnetic field going away from from with different intensity going away from your current element right make sense yeah yeah uh, make sense to everybody else out there in radio land No answer, so I assume that everybody is with me. So going over this again, this is your current flow in the, the in your z direction. This is your z equals zero plane. So you come, you go up, so you that go plus z. You go down, so you that go minus z. Right? This is zero. And your magnetic field going around. So, what we want to find is H2, right? That is H here. H, we want to find H due to the entire current um the entire conductor and we said it go from where where did we say the the, the conductor go from infinity to infinity a minus infinity to infinity 
infinity. So, right. So it goes from minus infinity. Man, if you know how me, bossy, nobody can talk to me though. So what is, what is it? It is what? Equal to what it, we have about that in the box. So we are going to say then the integral minus infinity to infinity. I So we have, okay, we're going to have I DZ okay. Area surface. DH. Equal. I. DZ. These are DL. Well, L, L is in this head, right? DL becomes DZ because it's in the this direction, right? I is L is Z. Okay. And what direction is in AZ? And that now cross with what? The unit vector. This, so far, this is this. And you are the next one is the unit vector. What's the unit vector now? Okay, that would be no, A R. Would be the A Z. Zero to R. It would be R A R minus. Z is it? What a spiral dot AR. Well, I don't know. Let me write this down first. Over. <clears throat> okay. Unit vector. This is the unit vector here, right? This unit vector here. This, I'm going to finish with this yet. Let me just explain what, what we're going to be doing here. This is the unit vector from in this direction, right? Unit vector of R. AR. This is AR. So this would be R because you're here or you're here. But this is where you want. This is a right triangle, right? 
So, R is this vector R minus this vector Z. You want this hypotenuse. So it would be this vector minus this vector here, this vector. So the unit vector for this would be this vector minus this vector over R square, the square root of R square plus Z square. This would be over the square root of R square plus Z square. You with me? Hmm? Sir. Uh, Sir. Uh, yeah. The square root of AR. Right We want this unit vector AR. Mm -hmm. Right? This this unit vector AR would be this vector R over. Okay. Vector AR would be equal to vector R over the modulus of R. Oh. You with me? So I'm saying that this vector r is small r minus this, via this. Vector algebra, man. Yeah, I, I got it. So it's the r a r minus z a z over the modulus of this, which is this. So then, dh, let me go erase that to finish up that. Well, we should I just start the course and all to backside. So this now, would be over four pi r square. This is r square. Which is, if you Write out this R square with that this amounts to I R D Z over four by R square plus Z square 
to the tree or what to you. All right. Note that R R is R is equal to R square plus Z square. Square root, right? This square plus this square. Square root of this square plus this square get this, right? Eh? So R square times the square root of this give you this. So your formula here now becomes I R D R over this A5. A Z look on this now. A Z cross A Z give you what? Follow me with this. This cross this. AZ cross AZ cross AR. That is what? The 90 degree to each other, right? That would be zero. That would be zero. AZ cross AZ. Then the parallels so that, that, that are one. You with me? We finish with this apart, or oh, we get this apart. We finish with that, don't so I'll show you how this work out now. AZ cross AR. That is zero. AZ cross AZ at a one. So there you go. So ideal. Sir, under, 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 can you show some diagram where AZ and AR is? AZ is the unit vector and the Z direction, right? Okay. And AR is the unit vector from your, your current element to where you're look, looking at the field. This is the unit vector in this direction. So when you do this cross product, you come down to I R D Z R V in that. So that. So then, all you have to do is this integral. So if we integrate. If we integrate I dz, so we are going to integrate along the z. So this becomes 
I over two by uh, if I Yep. So that is your answer. There's just a formula when I get to. Yeah, whenever I know number. This is the answer. Man, I know how we start over the course. I go with bad and all. <laughs> yeah, man, give me the grade and then start over. Yeah, I would never show up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no. Don't worry about it. Let's do the work. I'm going to be all right. Boy, it's law. In terms of distributed sources. So, this is um, what is now? I, mean, I get too fancy, I know, I know. All right, so this is a surface. Just like how we did surface charge. No we have a surface current, right? So we are going to say, and okay, for, for a conductor, for a line, we had ideal. For a current, we, for a surface, we have KDS. Where, and for our volume, we have JDV. So along the same principle, when we were doing the, the, um, the surface charge and the volume charge, H for our surface charge, the integral over the surface, K, DS, AR over four pi R square. So it's just the, it's just your current that, that changes from ideal or the line current to KDS for your surface current. <laughs> for your volume current is JDV instead of ideal. Everything else remains the same. Okay, consider infinitely long straight conductor along the Z axis. Yeah. The current passing through the conductor is a direct current of one amp. The current I got through this is one amp. The electric field intensity H at a point P 
is to be calculated. Which is a distance R from the Z axis. So it's just a distance R from the Z axis. This is your reference point zero. Consider small differential element at point one. That is here, a differential element, DL, which is going to become DZ. Right? So IDL, IDL is IDZ in the AZ direction. The distance vector joining one to point two is R12. Point one, point two is R one two. So R one two equal minus Z A Z plus R A R. Again, minus Z A Z plus R. Yeah. Which is what we just do. Never ever know, sir. Never have to do the drawing, but I'm glad we do the drawing anyway. So R12 is this. Unit vector is this. So DL cross AR12 AR12 DL what's DL Okay, DL is that DZ. AI12 is R minus Z. Do this cross product, you get this. So ideal cross A I one two is this. This is basically what we just did, right? So DH amounts to this. Exactly what we just did. Which is this. So H Integral minus infinity to infinity. Okay, I guess this is the part that we skipped over. How this integral, how to do this integral. Of course, your calculator does tell you, but this is how you do it. Giving you H is this. Now, the 
from electrostatics, electric flux density vector D equal epsilon times the electric field intensity vector E. D equal epsilon E. Remember that? V equal epsilon E. Right? We are epsilon. Similarly, the magnetic feeling intensity vector B equal mu times H. And mu So you see this, this follow from, from the moment you get, you get to the point of the, of the electric field, the magnetic field kind of track, pretty much exactly, not exactly, but closely. So once you get one, you get everything. So that's why I was always impressing upon you to get the vector calculus. We spend so much time on that. And the um on the the first principle approach to the to the electrostatics. Because once you get that, everything else falls into place. Eh? Sir. Yeah. Is um B B with the, the vector B. Is the, yeah. magnetic, is the magnetic flux. Just like how D is the electric flux, um, B is the magnetic flux. The magnetic flux, uh, magnetic flux density. Magnetic flux density. Yeah, yeah magnetic flux density. And H, H would represent the, what, the magnetic field intensity. Right. Uh, all right. Well, we have time to restart now. Andre? Yeah, can we start now? Yeah. Yeah, we we'll restart now, so I'm going to have to stop when we start this.
A forward. Well, yes, sir. All right. Now try it. What are you doing? That's some people. So what? That's how some people have been trying about 14 over there. OK. Um, after me can't remember the joke there, man. Only when me stand up. I will me stand up before the class, me can't remember the joke there, man. That, that is the only downside, you know, because as far as me see it right there now, I come and master this giant thing, and I go practice now. I want to learn something, man. Fit to with. Maybe me can't find all the, the character, them, you know. To draw up my equation and thing for the board. So, you see, I'll next. I'm mean, not come back to you, taking over there. Pure online, me I deal with. So, I can, I can I deal with me online and, you know, smoke my cigarettes and things. You see, I don't no bother with the video. You see me? <laughs> so we'll get some we'll get some my food out type pot. After we don't cook today. We don't cook today, man. We cook <laughs> choose like that. <laughs> but when I when I didn't be in COVID, kinda of sick down, we have to get together around a, a, a boat, you know? You can't, you can't smoke, you can't smoke my uncle's stomach in a sir. No, but me eat up some food before we start, man. Oh, so you're good then? I'm good. But you know, master, you know. Well, well, most one of the guys don't live on campus, right? No, no. <laughs> because you know, my idea is to live on campus and then ban, then ban hot plate. You're not supposed to cook and and damn. But we cook anyway. <laughs> And have some serious cooking with that going on with you know. We'd have a we'd have a a cooking we call one dung. Because you know a man have a hard plate and everything have to cook in the in the one part, you know. I mean you, know, you buy all your this like pork, pork chops or hog head and you put it in the pot and Season him up and put him on by a hot plate and leave him and go class. So when you're done class and come back now, everything, meat ready. So what you do, you peel your yam and you lay it neatly on top of your meat now. And then you peel all your breadfruit and knead your flour. And make different layers. We you have your meat, your yam, dumpling, and cover that up and gone back to class now. And when you come back now, that ready you now. Sweet is a sweetest food. Not even mama could have cooked so good, man. We call we call that one dung. That means you have one part to do everything. <laughs> Uh, but, but sir, the, 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 the uplate there, the poor man. Yeah. Because if you can the uplate the slow. Because if you can't go class and come back and nothing to burn up. Yeah, the uplate must be very slow. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But remember, you can After you know your thing, you, know, you, adjust, you, you adjust your, your heat. You know. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you have your, your dial where you can adjust your heat. All right, we have a certain amount of people there. All right, then disappear. All right, we're, we're open also. All right, we run this because it looks like we're not for father now. So now, we have a circular ring, right? With current. Current I. 
right? So current I going around. I want to find the magnetic field here. So at the same principle, a differential element of length DL, all right? So it will go so, it will go around. So theta, theta is your differential length relative to your R. Just like before, theta the angle between IDL and AR1. AR. This is your length. This is your R. So AR is a unit vector in the, towards P in the direction from the L. And the angle between your IDL and your R is theta. AR one unit vector the direction of that. R one to distance between here and here. IDL cross AR one equal this absolute value of ideal and the absolute value of AR1 and sign of the angle between them. So you move straight to the equation. DH ideal cross that over four pi r squared. All right. So ideal, and that's why we, we did this. Actually, actually, you will understand this better. If, with this equation, was repeated. Up here. So you would see the reason why we did this is because this is your electric field general formula. So we just work out this part here. Let's give that. So H is this. Which is the, <laughs> which is the integral around the circle <coughs> of this. Which works out to <coughs> this. The integral around the circle is just two pi r. <coughs> right? So h becomes this. <coughs> and the magnetic flux P so that's your B field 
for a, cir a circular current. You will, you will hear, um, you will hear people refer, re refer to the magnetic field intensity as your H field and your magnetic flux as your B field. Okay. So this, this, um, was for the magnetic flux of magnetic field. Um, in the center of a circular current, right? Look at this one. I guess I'll allow you to go through this one on your own. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, recall when we did the, the um, electric field and electric flux. We went down that path of integral, and we said that from there onward, what we would do is apply certain mathematical laws or rules to make everything simpler. So once we grasp what the concept was, is a matter of, of um, just <laughs> repeating the study of that concept using the mathematical rules, which makes the whole process Simpler. Hence, huh? hence we move from the the, the, the whole other integration to God's law, and then we apply the divergence theorem and so on and so forth, which all that does was make everything simpler. So here comes Ampere's circuital law. Oh, they say it here. In electrostatics, the gas law is useful to obtain E in case of complex problems. Similarly, in the magnetostatics, the complex problem can be solved using a law called Ampere's circular law, or Ampere's work law. The Ampere circular law states that the line integral of magnetic field intensity H around a closed part is exactly equal to the direct current enclosed by the part. The integral of H dot DL equal I. Okay.
Consider Long Street conductor carrying direct current I place along the Z axis. Yeah. I along the Z axis. Consider a closed circular part of radius R which enclose which encloses the straight conductor carrying direct current I. So this is your closed path. Consider DL at point P, which is in A phi direction, tangential to the circular part. So DL, DL, here's DL. DL would be, okay, going around here is, a phi, you're going in the A phi direction, right? So, DL, DL would be R D phi, R is that, and D phi in radians, right? DL going around is R, D phi, right? And it's in the A phi direction. So H, H, H is I, Yeah. All right. You all see this? You get that? Yeah. Everybody get this? Is the DL along the circle? Yes. Okay. So H. H, what is H again? Sir, hmm? the D, what's that, D phi, that means along the circle. What does the R, what does the D, the, the D phi, a D phi that? Yeah, all right. All this is saying is that the circumference the circumference, which is L equal to by R. Huh? So D phi would be say from from your reference, D phi would be whatever portion of the two pi you have. So this is 30. Okay. Okay. Right. So if this is 30, it would be what? 30 over 180? It would be, say if this is 90, 90 is what? Quarter this, so this would be what? Um, this is, would be, D5 would be, would pi be over two. Pi over two R, eh? okay. So that, that would be your, that would be your R, R, D5. 
phi, and it would be in the A phi direction, right? Okay. You with me? Yes, sir. So, may we go here, so now. We did calculate using white Savat law long way that H is this, right? No giant now in umbrella. This is this is H. So H that DL. This is your DL. I equal H that DL. H that DL is this. That is this that we already calculated that DL. And this work out to this. Right? The integral along the closed part is the integral 0 to 2 pi h yes, dot dl, which we call to this. i times 2 pi over 2 pi. So the integral of h dot dl equal i. So, we prove Ampere's law for a current carrying conductor by using the result that we get for H. Um, from Boyd Savrat law and show that it equal to I. So look at this now. H due to infinitely long conductor which we did one whole heap of integration for. Remember, brethren and sisters, we do a lot of integration to get H for an infinite long um, conductor earlier in the class. Now, we're going to use Ampere's law. All right? So, elemental, Length DL consider infinite long straight conductor placed along the z axis carrying a direct current I as shown in the figure. This consider Amperian closed part. No. Let me just add something. One thing you don't want to do. Remember, symmetry is always going to, to, um, to determine how difficult um, your problem is. In other words, for this, you could choose a closed part that look like this. You know? But God help you if you integrate along this closed part. So you choose one where you can hang. Right? Now, we consider point P along the closed part at which H is to be obtained. So you want to find H here due to this current, right? 
which is what we did earlier. And it was hell and powder horse. The radius of the part is R here. And hence P is at a particular distance R from the conductor. The magnitude of H depends on R and the direction is always tangential to the closed part, that is A phi. All right? So H has only component in the phi direction. Can we see this? H is only in the phi direction. So H is H phi in the phi direction. DL is R D phi A phi. H dot DL is H phi R D phi. The integral of H dot DL equal I. Therefore, integral from zero to two pi H phi R D phi equal I. Giving you, take out this. You want to integrate from zero to two pi. This is two pi equal I. So H phi equal I over two pi. Right? Times per meter. See how easy that is? Remember up here? Rem remember? How are you there again? You remember this? You, you, see, how, you see how that thing? You see that? You see it? You see it? Look there. Look there. So, so sir, eh? Eh? why would we bother to use that? The long one. If you don't know this, because you have to know, you have to know, um, I'm not going to put it on. Um, I'm soon find somewhere to put it on the table. But for the time being, right? Um, and say, Never said. You can't understand this if you don't understand, Professor. Put it that way. Then. This thing will make no sense to you if, if you don't understand, Professor. But this is where you run in a practice. Well, you could have asked the same question for guys, like, you know. Why were you studying cool arms, like? But when if I started here, right? If I started with this and say the integral of h that dl equally current enclosed, you would have memorized that that formula and. The, the actual thing would mean nothing to you. Or what is really happening would mean nothing to you. It's just like the, the example I gave you with the differentiation. Mr. Mangaru telling us said differential of that is x to the n minus one over that, n times x to the n minus one over that. And, and you guys didn't know what, what that mean. You just memorized that I walk with it through life. 
So it's the similar thing here. If you don't understand this, you don't understand the concept. But once you understand the concept, everything becomes easy. Now, if you pick up a book, you pick up, uh, if you are given um, a problem like this, say an exam, find, find age for an infinitely long conductor, find, find H at a point, uh, or B at a point, P, which is R, away from, from, from the conductor for, for infinite long thing. And you would try to do it like this in an exam. God help you. If you try, if you just do this, it take you one minute. And, and there is where um, practice plays a very, very important role. If you don't practice, um, you are going to get tied up in an exam. You can't do the thing, you know, and you understand it. But if you don't practice it, you're going to get tied up. If, say no. Say me put some, where is it now? Say me put some, um, some numbers to a question like this now, right? And, and, um, and give you an exam, like the exam that you're going to get is a multiple choice exam, which you're going to expect to do this now in five minutes. You need five hours to do this. If you go, if you go down this road, tell us that God help you. You understand? So that's why you have to practice. If you practice, it's easy. You just boom, and pays like that. Boom, boom, boom. H equal that over that. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you understand? You with me? It has six minutes you have left, sir. Eh? It has six minutes you have left. All right, now. And then, then I hit that. So we're not, we, won't, we won't start no more then. Sir? Yeah. I'm just ask you a few. I'm not sure if, it, if it's possible for you to pull up the um, the assignment, but there's a there's a um a question I want to ask. I'll be doing it to number one. Mm -hmm. That's the thumb drive. I'm gonna have it here. Wait, wait, sir. Wait, sir. Really? Uh, it's a, it's a, that is part B actually. It's a determined short density due. So the following electric flux densities, and I get B equal R sine phi AR plus 2R cos phi A phi plus 2Z square AZ. Shouldn't, shouldn't um, B have a, have, a, have a unit? Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, you have a unit, yes. All right, we didn't get any unit. And um, when you said the term, the charge density, um, is it specific as in, do you want the volume density, the line density, or the surface density, does it? Uh, what? The charge, um, all right, do, do this. Just send me, send me an email. With the with the with the with with your question, I may pull it up and respond to you. Okay. All right. All right. All right, guys. See you next week. So, um, let me say, I'm gonna try.